Hello, everybody. We'd like to welcome you to our Third Wave Thursday, and we are going to be getting into our end time series. So this is going to be a powerful series. I want to encourage you, of course, make yourself comfortable there at home, but we also want you to participate in the service. So when we're worshiping, we want you to worship also, okay? So let's get into the service as we start with our end time series. God bless you. say yes to your will right now oh god we acknowledge you as the king of kings and the lord of lords right now we worship you we give you reverence oh god there is none like you you are a mighty warrior you are great in battle oh god you are wonder working god you are the sweet rose of sharon right now oh you are the lily of the valley we acknowledge you as the king of kings we acknowledge you as the lord
understanding. You gotta acknowledge him as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Forget about the one next to you. Forget about your neighbor. He's ready to receive your worship right now. He's ready to receive your worship right now. Oh God, we acknowledge you, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, God. We give you glory. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Isn't it a privilege to be able to worship and praise the Lord this morning? And we want to encourage you to stay in that same atmosphere. Yep. As we worship the Lord with our music, with our song, with our miles, we could also worship him with our giving. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to go ahead and have a seat. Maybe you were standing up. You're there in your living room. Go ahead and have a seat. Praise the Lord. I, I want to share a portion of scripture with you while you sit down and get your giving ready. But the Bible says in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 19, it says, And my God will meet all your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. So just like we worship the Lord with our songs right now, we worship the Lord with our mouth. Some of us were praising him. Come on, somebody. We were dancing. Well, keep that same enthusiasm now that it's time to give unto the Lord. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And the good thing about giving unto God is he'll give back to us. The Bible says that he will meet our every need. God is not up in heaven broke. The economy doesn't dictate our God. Come on, somebody. He owns the cattle on a thousand hill. So as you get your giving ready, I want you to go ahead and fill out that envelope. Or you can come to the screen right there and you could get the, the snap scan. Just put your phone in front of it, however you want to do it. But I want to encourage you to be faithful. And as you're getting your giving ready, I just got a few announcements. I want to encourage you, don't forget to connect with us through our social media platforms. You could always go to our website if you want more information on how to connect with us. And our website is www.vocapetown.net. That's www.vocapetown.net. So connect with us. You know, we've we got a lot of social media platforms where you can connect with us. Also, if you're a young person watching or you're a student, a college student or a young adult, we have our gang nights and they have their live broadcast every Wednesday night. And if you want to tune in, I believe it starts at seven o'clock or you could come in early for a good seat. Come on, somebody. <laughs> but if you want to join our gang, they have Wednesday nights at seven o'clock. And then we got our third wave Thursday service on the same place that you're tuning in right now, and that starts at 7.30 p.m. Now, if you're new and you're, and you're first time watching us and you want to get connected, you can go to our website, www vocapetown.net there's a little button that says get started here and you can be a part of our church and wouldn't it be cool once this lockdown is over and we're able to start having church again that you say hey I got connected through Vic through, uh, through the website I got connected to Victory Outreach through the website and I got I clicked that get connected button and now I'm a member Whoo! I get excited just thinking about it so if you want to get connected you can go ahead and go to our website once again it's www.vocapetown.net well, are you ready to give? You ready to give this morning or this, this, this day? Are you ready? Go ahead and stand to your feet. Come on, and you know, we gotta get, you got to get into your pocket. It's a little bit easier to get into your pocket when you're standing. Come on, somebody. Are you ready to give? All right, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's get our giving. Bless God. Let's lift it up to the Lord. Father, we love you. We thank you for the privilege of being able to give on to you. I ask you to bless the giver today. Press down shaking together and running over you said when we give unto you you'll give back to us we love you we thank you in jesus name amen and amen well i want to encourage you to be faithful in your giving and be blessed amen Cut. praise the name of jesus welcome to our third wave thursdays 
you know, and, and how many of you know we are in a series called The End Time this month of June, you know, and I have the privilege to share on the signs of the time, the signs of the end time, you know, and my scripture I want to open up, amen, for those who are viewing, amen, I wanted to challenge you to view, uh, to zero in, amen, to log in through all the different uh, media platforms that we have made available to you. You know, and the scripture that I wanted to use this today is Matthew chapter 24, verse four, uh, uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 4 to 8. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of war and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines pestilence and earthquakes in various places all these things are the beginnings of sorrow i want to ask you to let's bow our heads and let's pray father we thank you lord lord that you will lord that you will minister to each and every person under the sound of my voice those who are viewing god to the different social media uh, platforms, God. We ask you, Lord, to anoint them right there in their living room, right there in that place, Father, where they come together. And Father, we ask it all in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, once again, we are on a series called The End Times. You know, how many of you know that we are living on the end time? Amen. And the Bible says here that the disciples, they were asking Jesus, about what, what, uh, how the times will look, how are the days. And Jesus give them, gave them, uh, you know, and Jesus said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. You know, one of the things that we need to be careful with, especially in this end time, that we cannot be deceived. You know, but that's why we thank God for this awesome vision that we have. Amen. That our founders, Pastor Sonny and Sister Julie, they gave us, you know, from the early 60s or let's say late 60s. Amen. They gave us this vision. Amen. That we will reach the treasures out of darkness and we will go, you know, and God will give us the hidden riches you know, in secret places. You know, and that's why I'm so happy and so encouraged by this vision because this vision keep us in keep us in line with what God is about to do amen but the main thing what I want to bring out is that we cannot be deceived amen to not uh, that we cannot be, be deceived especially in this time and what I mean with being deceived amen is that we, we stick to our vision we stick to what God has given us as a ministry you know and the definition of a sign is a motion or a gesture by which a thought is expressed or a command or a wish made, uh, or a wish made known. Another tra uh, definition is a mark having a con conventional meaning and used in a place or of words to represent a complex no notion. A man to, rep uh, to represent a complex notion. The disciples asked Jesus, what are the signs of this end time? You know, we are living in a, in a, Kairos, in a Kairos time. You know, and what Kairos means is a special time, a special time that God is about to outpour, amen, the, bring the greatest outpouring of his spirit, amen. And see, because my God is looking for individuals to fulfill his purpose here on planet Earth. You know, the purpose that God has given us as a ministry, Victory Outreach, amen, is to reach the hurting uh, people of this world with a message, hope, and plan of Jesus Christ. You know, despite of the signs of the end time and all the rumors of war, we still have to keep our focus on our vision of that God has given us as Victory Outreach. You see, there are many teachings going out there. There's many things that are happening. And praise the Lord for the body of Christ. Amen. I pray, thank God for the body of Christ. But we know our name is Victory Outreach. And we are victorious in when we reach out, you know, and especially with this pandemic that is happening. And man, of course, we need to ask the Lord for direction. We need to ask the Lord and uh, God, you know, uh, how can we live up to the name that you have given our ministry? You see, and our ministry is called in a Kairos moment. In 1967, God called our founders to start an end time movement, you know. And the Bible says in the book of Timothy, 
people will be lovers of money, pleasure, and will be disrespectful towards authority, you know, and on the streets of Cape Town and all around the world, in the inner cities, we are seeing the scripture that is here in, in, in Timothy, amen, we are seeing it coming to pass. And that's why God has raised up an end time ministry like Victory Outreach, amen, to go out and to preach the gospel in various places where nobody wants to go. Sometimes the police don't even want to go, even when they have their guns and all the weaponry. And God has raised up a tailor-made ministry in this end time by the name of Victory Outreach. And if, you're, and if you're proud to be part of this great army, if you're proud to be part of this great movement, I want you to clap your hands right there in your living room. You see, God has given us a tailor-made vision. You see, if we look at the crime statistics, amen, we see that uh, drug addiction is going up. We see that prostitution, amen, is high on the list. And other uh, lifestyle bound in sin, amen, is getting loose, especially in this end time. And that's why the Bible says very clear when the disciples asked Jesus in Matthew chapter 24, Lord, show us that, uh, what is going to happen in these end times. And man, Jesus said, told them, do not get deceived. You see, as victory out is, I want to urge you, I want to challenge you, don't get deceived. Because even right now in 2020, Amen. You know, the, the year just started and we faced uh, something that we never have seen in the history of this world. Yes, a lot of things were happening. Yes, in the history, a lot of uh, plagues and a lot of amen, sicknesses and, and all these different signs that we see today. Amen. Yes, they were happening. But what we are facing right now by being locked out and locked down, amen, from the normal day of life. A man is unheard of. But how many of you know that we have a guide? A man is called the B I B L E. A man, the Bible, a man is our, is, our, is our guide, is our roadmap in this life. You see, God has raised us up because if you look at the statistic back, back in the days, a man in the early, in the early 80s, 70s, 80s, a man, yes, drugs was, uh, was a rampart with drugs, especially when the people came, you know, there in the United States. They came from Vietnam and they started bringing in uh, heroin into the country. A man started getting crazy. Then the heroin came over to different parts of Europe. A man, you know, I had myself, had a, a brother, my eldest brother. He was for 40 years bound, a man, to, hero, uh, to a heroin addiction. A man, later on, cocaine came in, you know, and I was as a young boy, I was checking him out. A man, he was a, a merchant. He did everything for us as a family. A man, and when I got older, I, went, I, I was trying, to, uh, I, was, I started experiencing because I wanted to experience what he was experiencing. And little did I know, from a very young age, from an age of nine years old, I got hooked on every kind of drugs, on, you know, that you can see on the list. It started for me as uh, sniffing glue. From glue, it went to hashish. From hashish, it went to uh, dacha, a man, what, uh, what they call dacha here, Mary Jane in the States, a man for us is wheat, a man, you know, and I start getting involved in all these crazy things. Amen. And even later on, as I being hooked on cocaine, amen, even heroin, you wouldn't say because it happened to me on a very young age. I didn't have no youth. And that's why we seen when God has raised up this ministry, because the moment that I gave my life to the Lord, I went to another church. Yes, I was for a number of years in the other church, and I couldn't find my place in there. Amen. And then I went to a church right next, the, the next street over, and I saw my own brother was there in the home. And all of my friends that I knew from the neighborhood, I knew their reputation. I knew that things is happening, you know, and I said, no, this is the place where I have to be. And that's where I made the decision, and it was in 1988, amen, and I never looked back. I never looked back since 1988, amen. I've been in this ministry, and I've seen miracle signs and wonders. Miracle signs and wonders, what God has done in this ministry. But a story that I want to bring out right now is, I know from a very young age, my mom took me to the church. And I always say this story, many times, I mean, some of you have heard this story. 
I told my, I told God, you know, call me in the end times. Call me in the end times. You know, and I said, God, I don't want to serve you right now. Call me in the end times. And guess, right, guess what? We are living in the end time because God called me into these end times. Amen. And that's why, amen, we have the privilege. A lot of prophets said in the word, amen, they wish they could live and experience this time. They wish that could, they could live in this, in this time that we are living in because a lot of things are happening. You know, people are going rampart, amen. A lot of fear that is going on in this world, amen. But it's also a lot of faith of the body of Christ that is rising up. A lot of faith from the body of Christ, amen, that has an opportune time to preach the gospel as never before. You see... I was listening to uh, uh, one of the, the preachers right there, and he was saying, you know, every hundred year, there is a, a great event happening. In 1818, amen, things were happening all around the world, amen, people, you know, uh, in the... Uh, uh, in the different uh, countries, the different continents, things were taking place. Great events were taking place. In the 1919s, we see that right after World War One, a man, uh, right after World War One, a man, the, the, there were some declarations, a man, there were some treaties that were signed. I don't want to go all into it, but you can do your own study, your own research. A man, a lot of treaties were signed, but right after the World War One. You see, and then in 19, in the 1930s, World War II started. You see, and World War II, a man brought a lot of damage, a lot of, uh, a, a lot of uh, destruction, a man because of an empire. But what happened, a man that on, on D-Day, I think it was 1944, where all the presidents and their generals, a man from the, uh, they came together to attack a man, the German nation. But if you look at in the spiritual realm, amen, if you look at in the spiritual realm, amen, this is the same thing what is taking place. In John 17, Jesus said, the last prayer that Jesus said, Father, make them one. Father, make them one. That was one of the prayers that Jesus prayed, amen, in John chapter 17. And here we see in 2020, in 2020, amen, you had the World War I, World War II, and World War III. You know, and as you can look at from a spiritual side, amen, God has given us a pioneer generation. Amen. They were like in World War I. They were fighting with the weapons of World War I. And, you know, and then the Joshua generation came. They were fighting with the weapons of World War II, spiritually speaking. But now we have a third wave generation that is coming up. A third wave generation. Amen. They can't fight with weapons of World War I. They can't fight with weapons of World War II. They have to come up with some new weapons. And those new weapons, amen, are tailor-made, amen, for this generation. Because through this pandemic, because through this thing that they went through, God has even separated them for 60 days and even more. So they don't have no excuse that they can't get a hold of God because a lot of men and women of God, they separated themselves. They separated themselves to hear from the Lord. And now I'm speaking to this third, uh, this World War III generation that is about to find place in this, in this, in this era. Amen. That God has a plan. God has a purpose for your life. Amen. And World War III didn't start it yet. But we have an army of young people. We have an army of people that are giving their life right now into this ministry. They're getting ready. And I want to encourage them. Amen. The weapons of World War I is not going to work. The weapons of World War II is not going to work. It's those weapons of World War III. Can I hear the amen? Praise the name of Jesus. You see, because it's very important to understand young people and people that are living right now, the now generation, it's very important to understand. Yes, if I bring it in another, another way, you know, the World War I, what, we, what I symbolize with our, with our pioneers, they had the faith. They had the faith. The World War II, amen, what I see with the Joshua generation, yes, they had the strength. And they had the faith. 
But now this third this World War III generation, amen, this third wave generation, how we are calling them in our ministry, amen, they have to get ready with weapons, amen, of mass destruction against the, uh, against the kingdom of darkness. You see here, you know, there's a scripture in Matthew chapter uh, 14, I can't even see it right now, 14, amen, verse 30, 52, it says here, you know, that therefore every teacher, I want to get coming a little bit in the light, therefore every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out his storeroom, new treasures as well as old. You see, what this scripture shows me, in our house, we have old treasures, and we have a lot of new treasures. But all these treasures, they were in the storeroom. And what this scripture is telling me, a man that, all, uh, uh, that everything is in the house, the first wave, the second wave, and the third wave, everything is in the house. So I want to encourage this third wave generation. I want to encourage if you just came into this building, if you just gave your life to Jesus, amen, you are part of this third wave movement. Because Jesus is basically saying, focus on the house. Amen. You know, don't put yourself in other, don't learn from other things. Learn, amen, from the instructions given out of this house. See, many times, what it says here, many times you want to listen to instructions of other things, other movements. But God has given Victory Outreach a tailor-made, a tailor-made, unique vision. It has been working for 53 years. And right now with this third wave movement that God is calling us in this end time. Amen. Because we see the signs of the times. We see what the enemy tries to do. He tried to bring in fear. But God has called Victory Outreach. Amen. Cape Town Victory Outreach International to rise up to the cause. Amen. And so start taking our place. Start positioning yourself. Amen. The old treasures and the new treasures, they have to come together. The old treasures and the new treasures, it talks about the faith of the pioneering generation, the courage of the Joshua generation. And we want to see that those, uh, those uh, courage and, uh, amen, and those faith be combined together. And it will bring out new treasures. New treasures that are ready to take the world for Jesus especially in this end time. Amen. It's very important, young people, those who are under the sound of my voice, amen, mommy, daddy, amen, do not get deceived. Do not get deceived in this time. God has a plan for each and every one of us. God has a plan for us. What the Bible also said, amen, watch, watch. Amen. And to watch it means to keep watch. Amen. To watch it means, amen, not to fall asleep. We fall asleep with the, with the social media when we are too much in this Facebook, when we are too much in these other things. And I'm not saying Facebook is bad. I'm saying that you're looking at other things instead of listening to the word of God that is coming right now through Facebook. Amen. We need to watch. Watch that no one deceive us. You know, do not be deceived. Watch how the times and what kind of times we are living in. And my last point. Look, look into your own storeroom. Look into your own storeroom. Amen. Our storeroom is full of trophies, full of examples, amen, living examples, amen, examples that went to, be, went to be with the Lord. We have the full package, Victory Outreach, we have the full package. God has raised up this ministry 
to be an end time ministry. You know, I'm so excited because I asked the Lord, and I'm a young boy, I was seven years old, seven to 14 years old, I said, Lord, use me in the end times. And I know that we are living in the end times because what we are seeing right now, you know, I can call, uh, mention a lot of things, the rumors of war, amen, the earthquakes, the killer storms that, you know, that we can see on the TV, amen, the terrorist attacks, amen, that you just recently, a couple of years ago, amen, almost a decade ago, uh, uh, you know, we've seen how planes are flying into, amen, to the Twin Towers, we see, amen, that, uh, that, that it's getting more evil on the, on the way, even yesterday on TV, we see the gang violence that is taking place even in our very own backyard, but we need to understand, people of God, we need to come to that understanding that God has called us as a ministry. God has called us as a ministry. God has ordained each and every one of you. For you, what to do is to stay in the storeroom, stay in the house, stay in, your, in the ministry. Don't walk away. Amen. There's nothing out there. Amen. Stay in the house and go to the storeroom. And get those new treasures. Get those old treasures. Because it's all in the same house. Amen. God is raising up this generation. This generation must learn from the first and the second generation. If you want to be, if you want to be successful, you have to learn from both generations. Amen. And then seek the face of God. Spend time in the presence of the Lord and watch what the Lord is going to is about to do through your life. You know, someone even said as I was studying, they said that this generation, they're going to see the miracles. They will see the miracles of God. And what I mean when they're going to see the miracles, because this is one of my prayers, amen, as we go to pick and pay or shop right or maybe checkers or clicks, amen, or any other big, uh, uh, you know, if we, any other big uh, store, amen, and as people that are sick, you got the Holy Spirit is going to lead you to lay hands on the sick. Those people will get out of wheelchairs. You got, some of you are going to walk into hospitals. You're going to lay hands on those people right there. They're going to recover because this is our time. The time is now. God is calling us. God is calling us in this end time because the time is now. This is not a time to play around. This is a time to seek the Lord. Yes, for 60 days. You know, even right now, we pray every night there in the D home. We pray every night. We don't miss it. Every night we've been praying since this lockdown started because we believe God for revival. Amen. We believe God for revival. Yes, we got sick sometimes. Yes, we got tired sometimes. Yes, we got in the flesh sometimes. Amen. But they still, we still made it into our intercessory prayer. And God is already showing miracles. God is already showing the revival that is coming along. Amen. Third wavers, this is your time. Just for generation, this is your time. Pioneer generation, for those who are still alive, this is your time. The only thing that you have to do is position yourself with Jesus. Hallelujah. And if you're right there in your living room, amen, and this message has ministered to you, I want to ask you to lift up your hands right there. Lift up your hands right there. Because God is about to release an anointing upon your life. God is about to release, amen, his promises Amen. For some of you, you forgot about your promises. God is renewing it. Amen. God is reminding you for the promises. You know, yesterday, I even, you know, yesterday when I was listening to this preaching, even my promises, amen, that I got years ago from Dick Mills. Amen. I got five scriptures when I was still a missionary right there in the States. He gave me five scriptures. And this man was bringing all the scriptures out. And God confirmed my calling again. So if you are a person, you will, maybe you are, driven, you are driven away. You're drifting away from the Lord. Now is the time to come back. Maybe you drift away, amen, from situations or from circumstances. Amen. Now is the time to say, man, I forgive those who have hurt me. I, you know, I want to bring my life back in alignment with the Lord. Now is the time. And if this message is ministry, 
as the Lord has spoken to you through his spirit, I want to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes right there and to repeat this prayer after me. I want to say two prayers as a matter of fact. Maybe you don't know Jesus. Maybe you are drifting away. Like I said, you drifted away. I want to ask you to make your way back by repeating this, this words after me. Say, Heavenly Father, Lord, I believe that you have called me. And forgive me that I'm drifting away, that I was drifting, driven away because of circumstances, because of situations that happen in the church. But Father, I ask you today, I want to make my way back. And Father, for those who, you, if you don't know Jesus, I want to ask you to repeat this prayer. I say it together with those who are making their way back. Heavenly Father, I open up my heart. I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died and rose again the third day so that I can have eternal life. Father, come with your Holy Spirit in my life and change me. And let's pray for this third wave generation. Come on, if you are a part of the third wave, I want to ask you to lift up your hands because I can feel the anointing of the Lord right here. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray for this generation. Lord, there is no age, there is no race. Father God, there's no background of bound to this movement, what you want to do, God. I pray for them right now. Father God, that they will step up by faith. That they will step up by faith. Father, I pray you will raise them up, oh God. Father, give them a boldness, God. Father, give them, oh Lord God, a courage, oh God. And Father God, I break every low self-esteem over their life. Father, they will take their place in you, in the army. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. And if you believe it, give a loud amen and amen. Because God is faithful. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, God. We give you glory. We worship you. We, come on, just right there for, for a few more seconds. Just worship him. Father, we give you glory. We bless your name. We worship you. We worship you. You are the king of all kings. Come on and worship him. You're the Lord of lords. We bless your name. We bless your name. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness in our lives, God. We thank you that you are a miracle working God. And we thank you that you are our soon coming king. We worship you. We give you glory. Wow, what a powerful word. Amen. What a powerful word. And if this word has ministered to you, we'd like to hear from you. We have a WhatsApp line that is set up just for you. And you can WhatsApp us at 061-407-9474. That's right, 061-407-9474. Maybe you got saved or maybe you want to connect with us as a church. This may be your first time uh, tuning in. We'd love to hear from you. Also, don't forget, if you want to get connected, if you're a first-time guest also, you can go to our website at www.vocapetown.net. And we have a little button there that says Get Started Now, and that will allow you to get connected in our church. And then you can grow spiritually, and you can develop relationships with us at Victory Outreach. All right, well, we'd like to thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to join us for our Sunday morning celebration service, same place, 9 o'clock a.m. We'll see you there. God bless you. To make a payment via online giving, you need to firstly contact your local bank to activate your bank card for online payments. Go to Victory Outreach Cape Town website, vocapetown.net, and choose the giving option. Scroll down and choose your giving option. If you are giving from South Africa, click the red Pay Fast tab on the left. Choose your giving type, put in your amount, which will reflect in Rand. Enter your full name, email and phone number. Click on the Give Now tab. Regardless of your card type, click on the first tab option, Credit and Check Card. Fill in your email address and bank card details and click Pay. You will receive an email notification showing that your payments has been made successfully. Thank you for continuing to partner with us through your giving and may God continually bless you.